like I said, after I make a couple more videos that I want to uh, let the people know about, then I'm going to take a break from uh, saying too much. Okay, so I won't say too much, but I'll keep in touch and let things unfold for themselves through the spirit of the Most High Yahweh. And let's read Micah chapter 2 verse 1. Woe to those who plan inequity, to those who plot evil on their beds. At morning's light they carry it out, because it is in their power to do it. They covet fields and seize them, and houses and take them. They defraud people of their homes, they rob them of their inheritance. That's what they have done, right? So woe to the oppressors. Let's go ahead and take a look at the oppressors. Let's go ahead and show you why they make TV shows on Netflix such as Medici. You see that? Because of people like this. People that they don't want you to know about. Some of you probably never seen this person or probably heard of him. But here you go. This man controls the entire world. Many people know about the Pope, but what if he's not the only Pope? Rumor has it that there are three Popes in existence. The White Pope which everyone knows, the Black Pope and the Grey Pope, each trumping each other in terms of power. The White Pope is the leader of the Vatican Church, and the Black Pope is the leader of the Society of Jesuits. However, when it comes to the Grey Pope, it is a whole different story. Well, you'll see. The Grey Pope, or more commonly known as Pepe Orsini, is the latest heir from a long bloodline of Black nobility that are the movers and shakers behind world control, with their dynasty going way back to even Babylonian times. Today, they are the world's most powerful family heading the Illuminati, with even the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers reporting to them, but not many people know that. And see that? They're the ones who are controlling everything, okay? The ones who are funding the slavery that is going on in the Congos, South America, in South Africa. Some people believed, uh, that there was this uh, landmass called Gondwana in the ancient times. I'd rather say before the flood, okay? You remember Wakanda? There's no coincidence that Chadwick Bosman had passed away in August of 2020. It's the same year that this child sex trafficking thing became larger than ever. See that? So you may say, why am I bringing up this brother? Because he was a sacrifice, okay? By these wicked people who rule over you, okay? They're the ones who are funding the slavery. They're the ones who are funding these movies with the subliminal messages and the predictive programming. That's them doing it. A sacrifice to appease their God refers to an offering made to a deity often involving the giving up of something valuable with the intention of calming or pleasing the God, usually done in the belief that it will bring favor or advert misfortune. Again, these people are all Satanists, okay? They all worship Baphomet. Let's read this here in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 17. When he saw Elijah, he said to him, Is that you? Troubler of Yasharel. If they ever heard about me, that's what they would say. Oh, he's a troubler. He don't let us, you know, worship our Talmudic ways. I have not made trouble for Yasharel, Elijah replied. But you and your father's family have. You have abandoned Yahweh's command and have followed the Baals. Now some of the people from all over Yasharel to meet me on Mount Carmel and bring the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. See that? Their whole demon crack party. So Ahab sent word throughout all Yasharah and assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If Yahweh is God, follow him. If Baal is God, follow him. The people said nothing, right? Just like they say now. They say nothing. They just follow blind beliefs. Then Elijah said to them, 
I am the only one of Yahweh's prophets left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophets choose one for themselves and let them cut it into pieces and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of Yahweh. The God who answers by fire, he is God. Then all the people said, what well, you say is good. All right, so in other words, they said, deal. Okay, so let's deal. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one of the bulls and prepare it first, since there are so many of you. Call on the name of your God, but do not light the fire. So they took the bull, given them, and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning to noon. See that? See why the Most High Yahweh says, you know? You rise up in the morning, call upon your Jesucristos, your Jeebus guys, your Yeshua Mashiach. Right? From morning to noon, Baal answer us, they shouted. But there was no response. No one answered. And they danced around the altar they had made. See that? To the point that they go crazy. Because in their minds... You know, they, they think that their God is answering them. Oh, you know, my God is just busy. Yeah, you know, my Hesuchisto, he he's just uh, answering other prayers. He's going to get back to me. So they go dancing around. Praise Jeebus, praise Jeebus. Yeah, waiting for the answer. Two days go by, three days, a year later, and their Jeebus never answers. Because why? Because it's not real. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Shout louder, he said. Surely he is a God. Perhaps he is deep in thought, or busy, or traveling. Maybe he is sleeping and must be awakened. You see that? So, you know, it's not a bad thing to mock these people who believe in fantasies. You have to mock them sometimes in order for them to realize that what they believe in is a lie. It's a joke. It's worthy of mockery, like God says. Okay? So, they shouted louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears. You see that? To the point where their hearts go mad. You see why it says false hope makes what? It makes your heart sick. Read it. That's the scripture. That's what it says. False hope makes your heart sick. What do you think? You people out there are mad. Okay? Every day waiting for a lie. But then in your eyes, right? In your eyes when you come across one of my videos, I'm the mad one. I'm the one who's, who, who's you know, everything in your eyes. I'm mentally unstable. I'm the one who has been deceived, brainwashed. That's what you think of me. But you will not say to yourself that you're the one who has false hope. Okay? I'm not waking up waiting for nobody to save me. I'm already saved through the Spirit of Yahweh. He has revealed to me the things that He wants me to show you in order for you to be saved. So you don't have to try to save me. I appreciate that. But I'm already saved. It's time for you to save yourself now. Okay? So, this is what they do. They try to appease their gods with all kinds of madness. Again, they slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until their blood flowed. Is that not what you Christian people believe in right you believe that jesus christ right he took your sins he was beaten right blood trickled down his back while he carried that cross oh my god right and you feel so bad for him because that's that's a a lovely story that they gave you a sentimental emotional story that they gave you to play around with your emotions and it worked and it worked right but you have no regard for the real deal of why God has sent the one that he has sent. You don't care about that. You just love to hear your diehard Jesus Christ story. See that? Because it sounds similar, right? And that's what you believe in. Okay? Wickedness. And all that came from where? From Rome. Okay? From the Holy Roman Empire that you people love so much. That's why they love to close themselves in red. Why? Because they love that blood flowing. Okay? They love it. They love you. You know? Crying your hearts out. Waiting for a lie to come. But anyways, look what it says here. Midday passed, and they continued their frantic prophesying. Until the time 
for the evening sacrifice. And you know, it, hey, it's just funny to me because this is what they do now, you know? They, they, you know, hey, they prophesy lies. They're frantic prophesying. So look what it says here. But there was no response. No one answered. No one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, come here to me. They came to him. And he repaired the altar of Yahweh, which had been torn down. Elijah took 12 stones, one for each of the tribes descended from Jacob, to whom the word of Yahweh had come, saying, Your name shall be Yasharel. With the stones he built an altar in the name of Yahweh, and he dug a trench around it large enough to hold two sails of seeds. He arranged the wood, cut the bull into pieces, and laid it on the wood. Then he said to them, Fill four large jars with water, and pour it on the offering and on the wood. Do it again, he said, and they did it again. Do it a third time, he ordered, and they did it a third time. Mind you, right? This thing is all filled with water. The water ran down the altar and even filled the trench. I just want you to understand something here. You see that? How blood flowed from the prophets of Baal, but the prophet of Yahweh, he made his people pour water, right? So that water may flow. You see the difference here? This is why it says water will what? Will wash away the lies. Okay? At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Yahweh, the most high of Abraham, Isaac, and Yasharal, let it be known today that you are God in Yasharal and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Yahweh, answer me, so these people will know that you, Yahweh, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of Yahweh fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stone, the soil, and also licked up the water in the trench. Do you see that? That is what you call divine fire. Not this artificial crap, okay? You can't strike two stones and create that kind of fire, for this was divine fire. For the Most High said that that offering was acceptable because it pleased the Most High. Even the prophets of Baal gave up. Like it said, to the point where people stopped paying attention. Then Elijah said, come here. And they came to him. That's why it was acceptable. Because it showed the people that there is a true living God. And this is how the same effect will happen to you. To each and every one of you. You will learn that your Jesus Christ, your Jesus Christo, is that Baal. Okay? That thing that could not... Create this divine fire, no matter how many times people try to appease it. But it would not create the fire. Instead, those who honored the true living God, they were shown the divine fire. They were shown His wonders. And so you will be shown the wonders of the Most High, while everybody else is waiting, waiting for illusions to come. Amos chapter 5 verse 10 There are those who hate the one who upholds justice in court and detest the ones who tell the truth. Okay? They will always hate us just like they hated Elijah. They will always hate us. So prepare yourself for it. They hate the truth and they love lies. <laughs> Warning from the World Health Organization, the death rate of the coronavirus is rising. 3.4% is higher. Twice as deadly as previous estimates. 3.4% the state of emergency. emergency. Well, I think the 3.4% is really a false number. Based on a lot of conversations with a lot of people that do this, I think the number is way under 1%. So to fact check, the World Health Organization says the coronavirus death rate is 3.4%. President Trump lies that the World Health Organization is wrong. The number is 3.4 percent. 3.4 percent is what it's being reported around the world, making it deadly. There's so much death. The death rate. The percentage is 3.4 percent. And no hunch from the president can change that. Trump lied about the most recent World Health Organization estimate that the global death rate of coronavirus is 3.4 percent. The 3.4 percent death rate was wrong, and WHO data later updated it to a fraction of 1 percent. Let's go back into history.
Trump has a hunch that the death rate is lower than 1%. Way under 1%, way under 1%. Mozzarella stick and his stupid old job lied to viewers about the mortality rate. Way under one percent. False information. He's spreading disinformation. Disinformation and dangerous. Disinformation. If you're president of the United States, you're the world's greatest scientist at your disposal. Do you listen to that? 